Hey everybody, so remember like three months ago I called the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom my favorite phone at the time? Well now three months later, the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom is still up there. I think the OnePlus 7 Pro has slightly climbed ahead for the top spot, but the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom is still one of my favorite phones, probably my second favorite phone so far of the year. I love it for multiple reasons. One, I thought that the back, which is one of the best looking backs of a phone, like completely smooth, no camera bumps, and just a minimalistic design, and also a back that doesn't really attract fingerprints. I also love the pop-up selfie camera, the shark fin camera, I thought it was pretty unique, and I like the 10 times zoom lens that offered almost 10 times loss of zoom, and also digital zoom up to 60 times, which was pretty ridiculous. Anyway, the phone right now in my hand is not the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom. This is a new variant called the Oppo Reno Z. I believe this has got released in Europe for about 325 euro. That's like 350 US dollars. So while the Oppo Reno Z is still a pretty good value, it loses several crucial features that made me love the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom so much. So as you can see right off the bat, there is no 10x telephoto lens, that periscope lens. That was like cutting edge technology. So it's not in here. There is no shark fin pop-up selfie camera. Instead, you have a water drop notch. And on top of that, there is no wide angle camera on this phone too. So because this phone is missing some of the crucial elements I loved about the Oppo Reno 10x zoom, I almost feel like I can't call this an Oppo Reno. I mean, sure, it has that really nice glass back that I like. It has the name Reno in the name but it just doesn't feel like an Oppo Reno to me. No shark fin, no 10 times zoom. But that's not to say the Oppo Reno Z, it's a bad phone. This is still a very good mid-tier device. In Europe, it sells for about 300 US dollars. That's slightly higher than in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, you can get it for a little bit under 300 US dollars, like equivalent of that. Yeah, Hong Kong we, people, we always get phones cheaper than what you guys pay in the US and Europe. So anyway, I think for under 300 bucks, you're getting a really solid device at 350 then maybe there are better options out there so let's go over the hardware really quick you have a 6.3 inch oled panel 1080p resolution um, the colors look great indoors when you're using the phone inside i don't think you're gonna have complaints about the screen but when you're outside it doesn't get as bright as a samsung galaxy note 10's oled so under direct sunlight you might have problem seeing the screen but indoors absolutely no problem you have an in-display fingerprint reader super fast super accurate it's from that same vendor from china that i've covered goodix the fingerprint sensors are always on point powering this phone it's a helio p90 so that's a 12 nanometer chipset it's not as powerful as a snapdragon 855 but it's about on par with the 710 in terms of overall performance i didn't really encounter any issues playing games or using instagram sending emails whatsapp all that throughout the last three four days of using this phone but i do notice that um the ram management isn't as good so just sometimes when you open apps it's a little bit slower than opening apps on the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom or any of the other smartphones I'm testing right now. It's not a slow phone per se, but it's not like the fastest. There's a little bit of like, it's like a beat behind every now and then. If you care about Geekbench, the phone scored a 1982 single core and a 6805 multi-core. So these are respectable solid numbers, but definitely can't compare to a flagship device. So as I mentioned earlier, the Oppo Reno Z is missing the 10 times periscope zoom lens that was a specialty of the Oppo Reno 10x zoom but not only that it's missing the wide angle lens here and I think that's kind of problematic in August of 2019 every phone should have a wide angle camera I mean Meiju and Xiaomi are giving us wide angle lens for cheaper than the Oppo Reno Z so I'm not happy with this but the main camera is still pretty good it's a 48 megapixel Sony sensor it's the same sensor we've already seen like dozen times it basically shoots pixel bin 12 megapixel shots and then you have a secondary depth sensor here of 5 megapixel i don't really think this depth sensor is necessary because bokeh images on the Oppo Reno z are they're pretty good but at the same time there are like 15 other phones out there that don't have a depth sensor that can also capture pretty good bokeh images i'd just rather you giving us a wide angle camera instead so around the front you have a 32 megapixel selfie camera i mean 32 megapixel it's pretty damn high for me but if you love taking selfies man that's for you but overall this is a pretty nice build like this glass feels pretty premium and i really like that you see no matter how i rub it it doesn't really attract fingerprints that badly unlike 
my Samsung Galaxy Note 10, which if you touch it a little bit, it's like a fingerprint magnet. And um, the Oppo Reno Z, if you want a size comparison, it's a little bit larger than the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. But you know, there's curvatures on the back of the phone, so it fits in the hand pretty nicely. The display is also completely flat, which some people love. So, you know, overall, hardware is pretty solid. The power button, the volume markers, they're all pretty sturdy, they don't wobble. And um, as I mentioned, there's a stereo speakers too, so pretty good for a $350 or $300 phone. Okay, so let's go over the software really quick. This phone runs on Android 9 with Oppo's Color OS 6 on top. I've covered Oppo's Color OS 6 plenty already. Just know that I really like this. I, I use every Chinese phone and this is one of the best Chinese Android skins out there. See, I like that the app icons, they look pretty clean. They're kind of aesthetically pleasing and they fit into Google's material design mode. I like this notification shade with these kind of bubbly icons. They're, I don't know, they look quite punchy to me and easy to, to tap to if I need to turn on or off. And then you have this little swipe over menu here that allows you to go into shortcuts immediately. I like that. You can put whatever apps you want onto here too. The, my only gripe is that you can't bring down notification shade by swiping anywhere on the screen. You have to swipe from the top. And you can do stuff like double tap to wake the phone to it. And there's a face unlock if you're wondering, yeah, so face unlock. Okay, let's talk about the cameras really quick. So Oppo's camera software, it's very easy to use. It's a swipe interface. And then there's a hamburger menu here. You tap to access more modes. The camera focuses fast and the shutter speed, it's very fast. So I'm gonna show you some photo samples right now. During the day with good lighting, you're not gonna have any complaints whatsoever. You're gonna get really good images. And at night, if you shoot with an auto, images will be kind of a little bit grainy not that great but if you use night mode then you'll get something really good because i think oppo's night mode is one of the best on the market maybe the second best behind huawei's night mode you also have a pretty solid pro mode that allows you to you know ch change stuff like manual focus white balance color science exposure all that so overall the camera experience on oppo reno z it's pretty good but because it's missing a wide angle camera I can't say it's great. I think there are other phones out there like the Xiaomi Mi 9T at the same price point that can do more. Oh, I forgot to talk video performance. So the Oppo Reno's video performance, it's a little bit below par because on other phones like the Xiaomi Mi 9T, you get stabilized 1080p videos. But here, as you can see, there's not much stabilization. Videos are pretty jerky as I'm walking. And this is in really good lighting too. So videos at night are gonna be pretty jerky if you're shooting and walking at the same time. So overall, the Oppo Reno Z, it's a pretty good phone. If you're on the market for a mid-tier device for under 400 bucks, this is worth considering. But to be honest, there are better value out there. It's like the Xiaomi Mi 9T, for example. Similar price, but you get a Snapdragon 710 chipset, which is better at video stabilization. And it has a wide-angle camera. And then there's a Meiju 16S, which is around 300 bucks, and you get a Snapdragon 855. But that's not to say that the Oppo Reno Z loses out in every way. I think the Oppo Reno Z has a much better looking back and much better overall in-hand feel than both the Meiju and the Xiaomi devices. And you know, Color OS, I like Color OS better than Meiju software a lot. And also Oppo's uh, night mode is really good. So this phone performs pretty well at night when you're taking photos, especially when you're shooting like neon lights of Hong Kong or big cities. So that's about it for now. This is the Oppo Reno Z. It's a really solid, I wouldn't say great, really solid purchase decision if you're on the market for a phone at this price range. So I'm going to have more videos coming up very soon. I'm going to Europe soon to check out a new phone from LG and I'll be attending Apple's iPhone launch and then the launch of the Vivo Next 3 and the I forgot Huawei Mate 30 Pro. Yeah, so if you're interested in keeping up to date to the latest smartphones, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Review. So that's it for now. Thanks.